Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode number 25 and be with me in the book of Hebrews. Here's the title is, Do You Spiritually Stink? So I'm going to ask a question today and then the passage is going to answer the question. Here's the question. Who does Christ save? So does he save the shiny and bright and perfect self-righteous people that say, I'm okay? No, that is not the kind of people. Just read the Gospels and those are the Pharisees and in us modern day Pharisees. Okay, he saves the weak. He saves the frail. He saves the trodden down. He comes to save sinners and rebels. Basically, he comes to save stinkers. He comes to save people that spiritually stink. The Bible calls them enemies in Romans chapter 5. It says that while we were yet enemies... So he saves the broken. He saves those that are struck down. So people, let's say at the moment of their conversion, they have spent 100% right up to that second of their lives positionally being an enemy of God. So everybody that gets saved was an enemy until the moment of their salvation. That's what the Bible says positionally. So basically I'm saying they stunk right up to that moment. It's the stinkers that he rescues. It's the stinkers that he helps. So how does he do it? These people that need him so bad. God only comes to save his enemies and only comes to save stinkers. And how does he do it? Well, listen in. This is from Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25 through 28. Consequently, he is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was indeed fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, unstained, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. He has no need like the high priest to offer sacrifices daily, first for his own sins and then for the sins of his people, since he did this once for all when he offered up himself. For the law appoints men in their weaknesses as high priests, but... The word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect to, uh, forever. So he is able to save, not the qualified uh, people. He comes to save sinners and the stinkers. So he, he, Jesus, is not only qualified to do this, he's effective. So who can understand the complexity of, of the steps of salvation that have to happen in heaven? Who knows what spiritual powers may need to be knocked down or impossible doors be broken through or what intercession is, is required? Here's what we do know. We do know that his abilities result in effective, permanent, complete rescue. Rather than the committee of weakling high priests, it says here, it says we have the super priest. Rather than the imperfect intercession, we have the perfect Jesus. Rather than a series of high priests that die, we have Jesus that always lives. Rather than a multiple series of sacrifices, we have one sacrifice for one time. And rather than sinful, inadequate inter- intercessing, we have this holy, innocent, unstained, separated, exactly what we need, Savior. So what hope do we have in any type of plan B, you know, self-saving, self-righteousness? You know, can the smelly make themselves clean? No. Can the sinner effect a remedy by himself that uh, heals this breach in heaven, that makes things right, that knocks down the appropriate thing, in the heavenlies, that breaks down those impossible doors. Can a person do that himself? Clearly, no. And yet it is exactly these people that are in the smelly pickle, that it's exactly those that he saves, that he elects to help. So if you're a smelly spiritual person carrying around imperfection and decay, If you're frail or rebellious or sinful, take an honest look at yourself and say, do I spiritually stink? If the answer is yes, then have I got a good, a God for you? Just look at the revelation of just today. This is one paragraph on one page of the Bible. There's a lot more, but this is enough. 
that he's able to save to the uttermost, that he is always living and making effective intercession, that he lived a holy life, innocent, unstained, exalted, perfect. And he's offering himself for who? Who does he offer himself for? He offers himself for the smelly. So do you spiritually stink? There's a call here. The call is, if you stink, draw near. If you were God's enemy, draw near. So here's here's kind of something that struck me today, is that God only saves stinkers. A hundred percent of the people that come to him are stinkers. And he only saves enemies. He only saves a hundred percent enemies. And he only saves a hundred percent stinkers. That while you were yet a stinker, while you were yet an enemy, that's when he intervenes. So the charge today is if you find yourself being a spiritual stinker, a spiritual enemy, never accessing all these amazing things that God does in this, in this passage, he tells us to do one thing today. Draw near. If you're a stinker, you are welcome here. Draw near. He only saves stinkers. He only saves enemies. So what, what is our job? Our job is to draw near to the one that saves the uttermost. Draw near to the one who lives forever to intercede for us. To draw near to the one who is innocent and unstained and satisfactory to, to help us. Draw near. If you are a stinker today, if you are a sinner, if you are an enemy of God, but basically, if you're a stink, if you spiritually stink, draw near.